So after doing a lot of reviews recently, I see that a lot of people have a very good grasp of Golang because it's a very simple language, very easy to read and very easy to write. But I see people making the same mistake over and over and it's not basically a skill issue it's just something that you need to learn and if nobody tells you it you will never learn that's why i'm here at the total code it is my private community and each week i send out an assignment that you can solve right you can solve that in any language as you want but most people solve that in golang and by the end of the week most likely on sundays what i do is i basically uh, do a private live stream for the members of that community where i review resumes but i'll also review your assignments or other projects so this is basically an assignment of somebody from my private community he did a very good job but um, he made a mistake that i see a lot of people making uh, especially if you're new to goal it's nothing to do with your skill issues it's just something you don't know and you need to learn that right and that's why we are here so uh, hey if you're interested in the total coder community you can uh, find that in the link down below all right, so let's get started. So the previous assignment, we needed to do something with log ingestion uh, and he his implementation was more of a Kafka implementation. And let me show you what's going on here. So we are producing some JSON data, which is representing a log file. And we produce that on a Kafka queue, right? And of course, if we produce on a Kafka queue, we're also going to consume from that queue. And basically this is the Kafka consumer structure, which holds some data which holds some, some variables here. And the problem is here, right? So very simple, he's gonna consume here, it's a for loop. He's gonna read the message, he's gonna basically marshal that into an, a log data because the assignment was, hey, we're gonna provide you some log data and you need to basically consume that and store that efficiently in some kind of a persistent store. You can choose whatever that is, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, whatever, right? You could pick whatever you want. And the problem is here, right? So because this is a loop, right? Every time we consume, he's going to, actually two mistakes here. Each time we're gonna instantiate a new MongoDB client, right? So we're gonna make a new MongoDB connection, which is not a good practice because if you're producing a lot of logs and you're consuming a lot of stuff, you're each time going to create this new client, which is basically a little bit uh, of an overkill, right? And once that client is basically instantiated, we are going to insert that into a DB and send the UC and call it a day. So from a first inspection of this code, there's nothing really wrong with it, right? It works perfectly fine. And just, well, this could be more optimized, like I mentioned, this client. But there is basically a little bit of a structural problem here, right? Because what is going to happen if we want to say, hey, listen, uh, right now we do uh, a Mongol st persistent store, but what if we want to use Elasticsearch or we want to use something else, right? Uh, we want to write it to disk or we don't want to do anything at all because we're in a test phase or something. We want to just have a, uh, we just want to log it out or something. We don't want to persist it. So if we want to do that, each time we basically need to, or we need to write a new function or we're going to basically just comment this out or delete it and make uh, a new implementation here, right? For example, Elasticsearch or something. So you can see there's basically a problem, a structural problem. Actually, it's a dependency problem. Why? Well, because this client here, this Mongo client is completely encapsulated into this consume function. So it's a very hard dependency, right? This Kafka consumer depends so hard on this Mongo client that it cannot, yeah, it's just a very hard dependency. It's not an abstract type, right? So in Golang, how is a very common mistake, and it's not only, this is just a, a Kafka example, but it's basically just a repository, the DB um, dependency. A lot of people tend to forget to abstract away, right? So how can we solve that? Well, it's actually very simple, right? I'm gonna just do some, some pseudo code here. Instead of basically creating your Mongo client here, what he needs to do is he could make an interface, for example, uh, a persister. Actually, it, it's lock, so we could do something like a lock persister and it's going to be an interface and what could be a good uh, interface design here it could be something like persist um, persist log for example and as a good Golang engineer we're going to give this a context context right and then because it's an interface and especially actually in a lot of functions you want to have a context as a first argument but especially specifically for these interfaces because um, yeah 
a lot of these third-party libraries like MongoDB or, or Elasticsearch or whatever, they use context, right? So if you have an interface that basically uh, supports that, that's basically a big win and uh, it's a very, very good practice to do. So persist log and uh, we're gonna have, I think it is data log data, something like that, right? And of course an error, right? This could be the log persistent interface and the only thing we need to do is say, hey, listen, we're gonna actually embed, well embed, we're gonna uh, attach, is also not a good word, how do you call that? We're gonna basically provide this uh, persister, we could say uh, persister, for example, can I actually write this? Persister is gonna be a log persistent interface, right? And if you wanna, for example, new Kafka consumer, it's gonna take a Kafka config, but it's also gonna take, for example, the uh, persister, which is going to be the log persister, right? And then we're gonna say persister here is the persister that we provide as an argument, which is basically mm, some kind of dependency injection, right? There's a very big rabbit hole we can go into this, uh, but that's what I call dependency injection with this interface provided into this Kafka consumer structure. And right now, uh, we're basically completely abstracted the way how our persister is going to persist here, right? So we can actually completely, what's going on here? We can completely uh, delete this thing. And instead of connecting, it's already connected, right? It's already instantiated uh, because you're gonna provide that in the new Kafka consumer uh, constructor function or whatever you want to call that and the only thing we need to do is basically say if r is going to be uh, is the c dot persister dot persist log and we're going to take in a context do we have that yes we have one that's already a win the context here and then we're going to put in the data which is the log data here and then if the error is not nil we are basically going to copy some stuff from here like this copy that paste that in delete this and save and that's going to be the code right of course we need to change some other stuff uh because yeah right now we have an extra argument here in um new kafka consumer but it doesn't really matter right this is completely out of scope so right now you can see that if we want to consume it's just going to call the abstract the interface basically the, from the persister actually look at that i'm making these small uh typo mistakes here persister uh, just like that and of course we need to persister look at that man the persister just like that voila now it's perfectly fine so right now we don't depend on a specific uh, persisting type like MongoDB or Elasticsearch right now we just basically depends on the interface and anything that has the persist lock uh, function or method attached to it uh, basically uh, is eligible to uh, be inserted as this argument in the new consumer. Can be Elasticsearch, could be MongoDB, could be whatever you want, could be a no-op, it could be uh, whatever you want, right? As long as it basically uh, implements this persist log method. So, and this is a very common mistake. Uh, of course, the code will work, right? The code will work like he did, but like I said, if you want to do an interview assignment and they see that you basically understand that you need to abstract that out, uh, you're going to have, yeah, I think you're going to have a, a more better chance than people that do not do that, right? So let me know if you make the same mistake or uh, that you learned this or whatever. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And of course, hey, if you want to learn more about Golang, like I said, join my Discord community or join the private community or buy some of my courses, whatever. Uh, that's all up to you. And I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or next videos. Peace out.